Welcome to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Every week, I'll be sitting down with a sales executive where they'll share their stories and experiences that produce game-changing results. Let's be honest, sales can be a tough game. I'm sure at some point, we've all delivered a less than stellar demo, been ghosted by a client or two, and sometimes, maybe we did more talking than listening. And that's where I can help. The stories and insights our guests share can be applied to your own business, your territory, or with your team, so you're not reinventing the wheel. Our weekly tactics and strategies help you get out of your head and start creating your own path towards game-changing results. Welcome back to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. For those returning, welcome back. For those new, welcome. Today is the day that I'm coming on to share a solo episode as we enter Q4. Hard to believe we're down to the last almost 90 days of 2024. And what a year it's been. Um, I want to talk to you today, folks, about confidence. And the reason is I hear often in my surroundings and my trainings is just do it. Just, you know, just increase your confidence. Just, just, you know, <laughs> lean into it, get more confident, but no one really tells you how. Um, and, and I think what I think about is, you know, whether you're an individual contributor going for your first leadership role, whether you're trying to get into sales and you look, you know, and you see the, the job criteria is confident, outgoing team player, all these adjectives, but you know, you think, well, how do I, how do I become this person? Um, you could be someone who's in sales for 10, 15 years, and you think, I just want to try something new, and there's a lot of eyes on me, <laughs> and uh, I don't really feel confident, not really sure I want to lean into my vulnerability in a public setting, and, and I can say that that was me for sure. And so what I want to share is three areas I do, um, and hey, by no means am I, I'm a work in progress. But I've developed, uh, you know, I, I'm confident and it's a skill and I teach it and I embody it. And so if anyone is looking to see how can I improve my confidence, I'm going to share three ways you can do this. And I wouldn't say, oh, these are going to help you in sales. These are, these are going to help you in life because we are one person and, you know, who, how we show up, it's going to spill out into us in our sales role, us in a relationship role, as a friend, as a parent, all these things um, are going to help us overall but it also spills out into your audience so your team your children your friends your surrounding you are basically modeling the behavior of what it looks like for someone who's confident and so the three areas the first one is really looking at that belief system you know a lot of people are applying the tactics you know and and doing what they say what they they should be doing to become confident but they still lack that self belief and so there's an incongruence and so I want to share a quick story about chambermaids. And they had uh, a group of chambermaids. And what they were trying to show is the impact of our belief system. And so while their role is very physical, they weren't really aware how physical it was. It was just a job to them. So what they did was they d divided the group into two. And that first group they labeled and they said, okay, your job is very physical. And you are, you know, your job is to exercise through through cleaning. And so when they were making a bed, it was equivalent to a certain type of exercise. When they were, you know, dusting, it was another es exercise. When they were doing, lun you know, emulating lunging and things they were doing in the gym. So they had the belief system that as they were working, they were, you know, increasing their fitness. The other group was told nothing. They were just going to work every day as it was, and they were cleaning the rooms. And um, at the end of the defined time period, they tried to keep everything as equal as possible in terms of diet, stress, everything. But the group who believed and who were told that their role was to exercise, they lost significant weight. They um, had a decrease in blood pressure, uh, improved heart capacity. And there were so many benefits because they believed that they were actually doing something purposeful while they were at work. And so I would just say like, how many of us are just showing up and even, you know, you're given a script or a framework and you're going through the motions, but do you actually believe that you can make a difference? Do you believe that you could influence the person on the other end of the phone or the Zoom call because you've helped others like them and that they are a good fit? So you're not going to do, you know, use this in a manipulative way, but a lot of it is like, do you believe that you can do this? 
because so many people are just applying and layering these tools and reading these books and listening to podcasts. <laughs> and then they're like, but it's not working. Why not? Because of the belief system. You know, you have to see it for yourself. And even if you don't, you know, and, and I don't like this fake it till you make it, but it's fake it until you become it. So how can you do this repeatedly? But you have to see it for yourself. You have to know that you are worthy of this and that you can do it. And so I, I find that first one is belief. And when you think about sales, if we're lacking belief, if we're lacking conviction in ourselves that we can take someone across the chasm, how can we expect them to believe in us? We are leading and we are projecting our doubt, our insecurity, our lack of confidence. So we need to believe that this is possible. Absolutely. That is step one. The second one is there's this knowing doing gap. We know we should be doing things, but we don't do them. And so what I would say, if we are trying to improve, increase our confidence, you know, how can we do, how can we just act, whatever that is, if it's, you know, presentation skills, if it's speaking in public, if it's, if you're a leader and you're having difficult conversations, have to give feedback, constructive criticism, whatever it is, how can we just do it? And many people say, well, I've read, you know, the scorecard, I've read the script, I've looked at the PowerPoint. Yeah, you have to do something. You have to roll up your sleeves and you have to do some reps in order for your body to say, okay, I feel, I feel, and that's the thing, it's a feeling. I, f I feel the discomfort here. I feel that I'm not very good at it. You're not probably not going to be that first time, but even that feeling of, okay, th the second time, you know, wasn't, it's still bad, but it wasn't as bad. But if we don't act, and do whatever that hard thing is doing, that uncomfortable thing, that thing we're trying to improve, we're never going to get better. And so a lot of people, even when it comes to presentation, they say, well, I practice it in my head. That doesn't count. <laughs> that does not count. So get your clicker out, get your presentation. Uh, what are your talking points per slide? What are your transitions to the next slide? Where are you going to pause? Where are you going to ask um, for audience engagement? That is the doing part of it. And so I just feel there's a lot of this hiding behind and reading and listening, even podcasts. Like if you don't stop and take notes or build whatever the, the host is sharing or the guest is sharing into your affirmations, into your presentation, into your talk track, you're not going to do anything about it. So we have to act on whatever it is that we want to do that's going to help us improve our confidence. Okay, so that first one, again, is we have to believe it and see it. And we have to do it. Whatever that is, we have to do it, knowing that we are probably not going to be great at it the first time. And I think, you know, once you accept that, part of it is like, yeah, I'm, of course not. You know, think about skateboarding. If I were to get on a skateboard right now, I'd probably, <laughs> I could say break my neck, but a back, back breaking your neck off by an inch, and that would be me. But over time, I would get better, right? It's like anything. And the third one is I just thought of as track and stack. And so, how can we track our performance? How can we say, okay, that first time <laughs> was not very good, but over time, A, it got easier because probably you got out of your head, but B, you see little, you, you're, you're starting to iterate little things and say, okay, when I do this, it got easier. Um, the more I did it, it got easier. And you start finding little nuances that work for you but you start tracking them and you see, okay, well, I'm getting better here. And it's incremental. It's not going to be you're going to go from, you know, zero to 100, but you might go zero to 0.5 to 0.75. And you're incrementally getting better. And as you're doing that, you start building your confidence because you start, this is the second, you start stacking. You stack the, the repetitions. You stack these mini wins. It's not like I, you know, I converted all these deals, but I got further along in my deal. I got more adoption for the project I'm trying to roll out. I'm getting, I'm building trust with my team easily or more of them are coming on board around me and booking one-on-ones, whatever it is, we start stacking these mini wins and we look around us and we say, oh my gosh. And over time you realize, what was I so worried about in the first place? You know, and then, and then what you do is you replace whatever that is you're working, working on or working towards with something new because you've achieved it. Okay, you no longer have to really focus on that. So again, if you're looking to improve your confidence, uh, your your performance, and, and I just hear it so often, it's like, well, just, you know, just show up confident. Okay, well, how do I do that? And so again, in summary, it's you got, you got to believe it. 
you got to see it for yourself. Okay, most people are focusing on what they don't want. Focus on what you do want, what you do look like leading that discovery call, what you do like leading that team, winning that President's Cup award, whatever it is, you have to believe it. And when you believe it and that thought, everything lines up and stacks underneath it, okay? And it's not going to happen overnight. I think you also have to have realistic beliefs, but you definitely have to see it. Um, the second one is that knowing doing gap, okay? We can't just look at it and say, oh, here's a vision board. This is great. I'm going to attract more, becoming more confident. No, absolutely not. That will help, but you need to act. You need to put some repetitions and do whatever it is, okay? Whatever that goal you're looking to achieve, whatever that um, area you're looking to approve, improve, you have to do it. Um, and you have to do it, you know, a lot. You know, um, you don't become, there's a 10,000 hour rule for a reason. So you have to do it. And I would just say, you know, as you're doing it, be mindful of like what you're feeling, you know, and a lot of it I've noticed in my experience is it, it's harder initially because the story, the weight we give it in our heads. And when we actually do it, we're like, that, that, was <laughs> that really wasn't that bad. Where did all that reluctance and hesitation come from and it was the story we were telling yourself so as you're doing it you're starting to debunk that story and that narrative that doesn't serve us okay so definitely the doing part has to happen and then the third one is track and stack so how can you start tracking your progress uh, tracking what you're doing well what's not working and really iterate so that you can say okay well when I do this um doesn't really have an impact on me, but when I do this, it does. Okay, lean into that and even get curious. Why is that? You know, so that you can make it easier for yourself because you understand what works for you. Every th These are going to be different for everybody. And the, the second part of the track and stack is stack them. So when you have, you know, one little advancement or one area where you're improving and it's a, it's a micro improvement, but when you have that in three or four areas of your life, all of a sudden, what once seemed insignificant is starting to compound, and you're seeing, wow, when I showed up, I really engaged. I captured the attention of the audience very quickly. Well, when I um, invited my team to share in, in their deal reviews, the hands all came up. So what are you doing that's working? And you start stacking these wins, and you get you, the feeling is there. And you realize all these reps, all the work you're putting in aligned with the belief system is working. And over time, you become a confident person. So success or confidence is what you attract by who you become. You are becoming this person by going through the actions, by seeing it, and by stacking the wins and tracking your progress. So it doesn't happen overnight, but this is just a quick three three-part hack that I use because I can tell you um, I wasn't always I remember you know speeches in elementary school I I almost wanted to call in you know call in sick uh, <laughs> you don't call in sick for school but I was I had such fear of public speaking now I love it and I teach my kids you know confidence all the time one thing I'll always say to my daughters you don't ask you don't get okay so how can we lean into that discomfort and growth is on the other side. So when you're when someone is telling you just to, you know, find your voice or get more confident, you know, here's three ways that you can actually put that into practice and start doing it. So uh, love to know your feedback, your thoughts. If you've tried this, if you have anything else to add, these are just three. There's many, many others. Uh, but anyway, this is a short and sweet one. So thanks for listening, everybody. And um, good luck on the on the start of the last 90 days of 2024. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.